Was a nice little chirp from that bird right there. She made a little bit of scratch. Yeah, that was nice. I am Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're in Minneapolis, Minnesota, out in the suburbs. And we've got a great car for you. I'm with Randy Geyer and our restorer, Mike. Mike, your last name? Sweet all. Sweet all. And you can see all the information about Mike's descriptions of cars he's worked on in the description of the video. Randy, what year make and model is this one? This is a 1957 Chrysler 300C. And with the 300C, you've done something with these shirts. So what's going on here? If you could well, turn around for me, please. I, I like to uh, make shirts to go with my cars. <laughs> in stereo. And so uh, yeah. in, the, yeah. <laughs> in the daytime during the car show, when it's sunny out and warm, I'll wear the white t-shirt, obviously. But then when it comes the evening and it's time for award ceremonies and banquet time, which I'm arrogant enough to know that I'm going to get an award, I have a more <laughs> formal shirt that's black and tan just like the car is. The interior with some shirt. of the, uh, the insignias or the, the, what I call the medallions, you know, embroidered into the shirt. That is great. For this one right here. So I'm going to start with you, Mike. What uh, when this car came home, your wife had something unique to say about it. What did she say? It, it is the first car that's ever driven in for restoration. <laughs> and, she, and her she response was, "I could not was, believe that somebody would restore this car because you could drive it." So. so it had the drivability, and I just want to show that headlight from the top. It's got that very defined point that you wouldn't necessarily notice at first. And the blackened in eyeliner really gives it a great look and the offset red right in there. So was this car a challenge or was this one of your easier ones to restore? I said um, all of them are a challenge in, a different, w in different ways, but uh, this one to get it perfectly straight in black, um, all of the sanding that has to be done is oh a huge, huge challenge. Okay, so black is just as much of a pain as we've heard from a restorer standpoint. I love painting black, but um, but just you know, for the body works it has to be perfect. But uh, painting black is great, and it and it always shows off everything really nice when it's done as a nice job. Well, congratulations to you because this paint, as you can see, is just I'm going to show it that the light off it. It's just flawless, and it's really a testimony to your work. And I know that you've done. You and your father have done quite a few cars, and uh, I really appreciate that work. Randy, I'm going to have you jump back in for a moment. So, Randy, tell me, what year did you get this one? I bought this car in uh, 2010, and I actually drove it for a couple of years before I turned it over to Mike to restore it. It was a drivable car, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was a pretty solid car, but I just felt that it really needed to be brought up to high standards. And uh, I gave it to Mike, and he restored it in two years, just under two years. Wow. And look at the fins on the back of that. This is right at the time where fins were king, and this was clearly right, right there. I'm going to stand behind it just to show people that angle. We've got some trunk and treats. Let's uh, take a look at those, shall we? We've got something quite unique in the trunk of this one that I think some people will be surprised about. So there's a push button. So first you can see we've got a massive trunk. And actually, talk about this black piece right here. This isn't accidentally well, a trunk This is of interesting. Wood. You know, uh, Chrysler's, uh, any Chrysler car from, oh, 56 to, when did they, how long did they make push buttons? 63 probably. 63 about. Well, well anyway, uh, there is no park uh, selection on this car. They, there's just neutral. So when you stop and park the car, you put it in neutral and then you set the emergency brake or the parking brake, whichever you choose. To. And Chrysler then included this in the trunk of the car as a wheel chalk so you could chalk your wheels if you're afraid the car was going to roll and that the, the, the parking brake wouldn't hold. That's if you live in right? San Francisco, you might need a bigger one. Yeah, <laughs> might need a whole log. So that's a factory item. Yeah. And they put the uh, jack information. You would literally have to get into the trunk. 
to read that, <laughs> which is very convenient, uh, how they stuff that there. So now you see our mighty Chrysler for 57, and there's the most glamorous car in a generation with the glamorous picture. And as we open this up, I'm going to be very gentle with this. Because this is the real stuff. The most glamorous car in a generation. The New Yorker, the Saratoga, the Windsor. You could kind of read through some of that. The convertible coupe. The four-door hardtop. The town and country wagon. The two-door hardtop. The Saratoga. One headlight notice. A four-door hardtop. The Saratoga sedan. The Windsor sedan. Got one more page in there. There we go. The four-door hardtop. And the town and country wagon. The torsion ride. Sensational. I've gone through this a little quicker than normal. Talks about some engines. We didn't see the 300F in here, or the C, excuse me. But this was the piece that you're just not going to see. So what's in the box? Well, to our surprise, when we bought the car and opened the trunk, here was brand new in uh, a new old stock uh, in the, is this Highway Hi-Fi. We'll show you the car has one installed under the dash, but this is actually a never been used. Go ahead, it's a record player, but, but Chrysler called it Highway Hi-Fi. It was made by, oh, I don't remember, was it Columbia? Uh, Columbia made the records, but this uh, record player plays at 16 and two thirds RPM. So the records are special. They're about the size of a 45, but since they turn so slowly and they're cut with such fine grooves, uh, one side of the record will play for about 45 minutes. Wow. You carefully kind of open that up. Look at, let me show that. Look at all the pieces. Even here, diagram <laughs> and Mike correct me if I'm wrong but Randy parts. likes to have everything work everything must work so you um, had to make this work we um, won't take it all apart but we'll just actually, leave it right there Jeff Carter helped with that process and look at this Wow still brand new in the box old. <laughs> brand new old, brand new, we, old yeah. we, brand new old we will put that back in the box as you just seen it well Let's, do before you go away sure. here's what's also interesting oh, that was in the trunk please i almost forgot that we skipped this originally in 1957 well i should say that the the highway hi-fi was originally introduced in 1956 and offered in that model year now i'm not sure they offered it in 57 and I think into 58, but I think the only reason they did was that they had units that they couldn't sell, and so they kept offering it, trying to sell them out. But at any rate, when you bought a Highway Hi-Fi in 56, you got six starter records. And then you could subscribe and buy more through the mail, and you could buy this cool little leather case to store your records in. With the key, etc., to lock yeah, them and in. Yeah. It still has the original keys. As you can see, the condition is just Immaculate. about perfect. Yeah. And it is full of records. So, to show you that this box wasn't something that somebody picked up afterwards, check this out. Here it talks about the actual records and what's playing on each side. And to just show you, here we are, side one. 
side one, highway hi-fi, Tchaikovsky, side two. And I'm going to be very careful because you don't usually see them in the wrapper unmolested. <laughs> Number two, the pajama game, etc. The pajama game there. So I won't take them all apart. We're going to keep that just like that. But that's short of amazing. They made a total of, I believe it was 35 or 36 records were the complete, if you had every single one. I think I have about 26 or right about in there. So. Very, very cool. Randy, may I open it up? Yeah. All right, great. And Randy, before I open it up, tell me about this sticker right here. Well, this is kind of interesting because the fellow that collected these Chryslers back in the late 50s and early 60s, uh, he collected to the, these cars to the point of near bankruptcy. He would drive them around for a while and when they maybe weren't running right or he couldn't get them to run right or something was wrong with them, he'd just put them in the barn and he'd go buy another one and drive it and put that in the barn and he just accumulated cars. Well anyway, he got old and died and he left his collection to his eldest son. And his eldest son then took his younger brother to the 1964 World's Fair. Wow. And the younger brother bought that sticker at the fair and stuck it in the back window. So we think it's an important part of the car's history and so when we restored the car we were careful to save the back glass and then polish around it so that we didn't disturb that sticker. Yeah, I love I love the Leaving the Legacy. May I? Yes. Thanks. Yeah, Leaving the Legacy of the car is just beautiful to keep it intact like that. So you can see the wonderful panel here and no mistaking what you're in with the 300. You've got this wonderful bench seat. There's one other interesting thing Please. about this car as long as we're right here. Yeah. You notice that the windows are crank windows and you'll notice the seat is a manual uh, seat where you, you know, to move the seat. Mm -hmm. That's unusual because these cars standard had power windows and power seat. Oh. So somebody had to special order that to get the crank windows and the manual seat. So that makes it kind of unique and kind of interesting. So they might have wanted the prestige of the 300C, but they didn't have the, bunk, the budget potentially for it. That's a possibility. That's possible. So they got the cheap banker's hot rod. The thing that's interesting to me in this, we've got our push button here. And notice the interesting knobs. Notice how they all stick out too. You know, we've got, I'll give you an example. My hand, as you can see, fits back here around this clock. And I see the miles here. We have about 54,000. Those may be original miles. I think it's very possible. Judging by the condition the car was in when I bought it, uh, pretty rust-free. Uh, that was probably our actual mile. And so tell I also me. mentioned that the speedometer being 150 is unique to the 300C. Got it. What would it usually be, 120? Yeah, the rest of all of the lower model cars were 120 miles speedometer. Got it. Mike, jump around the other side for a minute if you would, please. You got the mirror right there. And you're going to see why I have Mike jumping in for a second. We have the Chrysler 300 emblem standing out. And now I'm going to focus on this section here. So as we focus on this and I get a little closer, I just want to show you this word right here, Highway Hi-Fi. And we might not want to play it just because we might have copyrights, unfortunately, with YouTube. we got local indices. But just I can show you how it, it works, yeah. Sim. Yeah, you just uh, press the button to open it up. Um, now, before you go too far, I notice there's some instructions here that may have never been read, but if you want to read them, someone can. You now have it on your big screen. Mm -hmm. You'll see that. And as it says, you'd pull out the, the table until it stops. Um, you have to turn the key on, preferably accessory, and then turn on the radio. Okay. And then you can... Uh, it's um, a tube radio. Turn the hi-fi on and then set the 
needle onto the record and it should play. Got it. So this button pushes down and it moves over to place. Yes, yep. This, the cool. red button goes down and if you lift up kindly on the, the needle it'll slide onto the record. So we thought we'd play the Highway Hi-Fi for you. You don't get to see these play and if you're wondering how it plays I'll just show you. That's spinning. And that's coming out of the Highway Hi-Fi. Take a look under the hood, shall we? Sure. Okay, great. Mike, while you open that, Randy, if you can jump in it, we'll uh, oh, sure. we'll fire it up here in just a second. I'll just scamper right in. <laughs> wow, that is pretty impressive. Yeah, Where's the little fender tag? Is it the 300 on the 300? It's right here. Yeah. Okay, I see it there. Those of you who know, I'm going to chase that yeah, down. Yeah, this is a 392 cubic inch uh, Hemi. It was Look a, at a bugle. Uh, I'm stuck on the bugle down there. Yeah, and the two giant horns. These uh, from the factory are rated at 375 horse, solid lifter camshaft, and two four four barrel carburetors. Got it. And let's uh, really let me take a, a look over here. We've got our braking system. Yep, power brakes and power steering. As often on the 300s, I'm mostly loaded up. Like he said, this one is strange in the fact that it doesn't have power windows. So. Okay. Can you fire that up, Randy? Listen to that. What was the cubic inch? 392. Just like the current ones. Just like the current ones, yeah. Go ahead, let's give it a rev. Sweet. So we gotta take it for a ride. I think we should. All right. It's a nice day. Here we are in the 57 Chrysler 300C. And you call this one a special name. What do you call this one? I call this one the Sea Biscuit. <laughs> if you remember the old racehorse from the 20s that won the Triple Crown, his name is Sea Biscuit. S E A, but we're calling yep. it Sea Biscuit. Yeah, because it is kind of a racehorse when you think about it. No doubt. I just want to show people a little bit of our drive here as we cut the corners. Beautiful day. So what made you purchase this one? What what caught your attention? Well, because once again, it's a Finn Mopar, and I have a nice collection of Finn Mopars, and it just kind of seemed to fit in. I love black cars, and uh, the price seemed right, and uh, yeah, I just couldn't resist. How I many... have this addiction, you know. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't get a cure. <laughs> how uh, how many? Don't tell me the cure. How many C's do you see? Well, uh, as far as the letter car series, they're fairly common. Uh, I think they made a total of 
oh, I don't know, in the 2000s, I believe. So for letter cars, that's quite a few. And this one, I mean, uh, it's got some giddy up, which we showed people earlier in the video. It does. This has the 392 Hemi with two four barrels on it. Now, was there a different option? Uh, no. That okay. is the standard engine. That's what you got. For this yeah. car. Yeah. And let me just show people as we're in this S-curve. It handles pretty gosh darn nice. You love that big hood, too. And we're rolling on bias ply tires. What's the reaction when you're driving this car? I just had somebody yell, that was a cool car, but what's the usual reaction when you bring it to a car show? Well, yeah, that's pretty typical of, yeah, people People are attracted to it, all right. You think it's the uh, uh, the color, the Batmobile fins, the combination of everything? I think it's all of that. Like you said earlier, uh, that it has a little bit of a sinister look to it that's kind of attractive. Yeah. And then, of course, it's got the full leather interior, which makes it not only sporting and fun, but luxurious all at the same time. Which is pretty cool. And you've had this one up to, what's the highest you've had this one up to? Well, I've gone 130 miles an hour in it. I, I believe crazy. it's capable of more than that, but <laughs> it gets a little funny. <laughs> it gets a little funny at that. Give Makes your just, heartbeat a little faster. Yeah, give us just a little heartbeat before we <laughs> sign off here. Go ahead. Okay. Give us, a little, give us a little uphill. We, we laugh like two little kids. <laughs> well, Randy, it's always fun getting together with you and hanging out and having some great time in your great cars, getting all the looks and attractions. Thanks so much for being on My Car Story. Well, thanks, Lou. We're getting to where we need to go, and we're getting there quickly. Nice.